let's talk about vehicles we use to get around and how we need to rethink the way we power them. Widespread car ownership is a relatively recent thing. It only started in 1908 when the Ford Motor Company launched the Model T. These were the first cars built on large assembly lines. This made car ownership affordable for the middle class. By 1927, 15 million Model Ts were on the roads. Car ownership has kept on spreading ever since. Today, there are about 1.5 billion motor vehicles on roads around the world, or 100 times more than in 1927. On the one hand, this reflects tremendous advances in global prosperity. That's something to celebrate. But on the other hand, all of these cars emit a lot of carbon. In 2020, transportation accounted for over 16% of global CO2 emissions. Governments worldwide have begun to act. The EU, for example, requires that new cars sold in 2030 emit an average of 59 grams per kilometer of CO2, compared with about 100 grams now. The US and other countries have also set carbon reduction goals. The writing is on the wall. Cars powered by fossil fuels will have to yield the way to hybrid cars, cars using hydrogen fuel cells, and electric vehicles. Growing the proportion of EVs in the global fleet will play a decisive role. EVs are far more energy efficient than traditional cars. According to the US Department of Energy, electric cars convert over 75% of the energy stored in their battery into power at the wheels, and their conversion performance keeps improving. By contrast, gasoline-powered cars achieve 30% at most. Obviously, EVs need to be charged, and some of that power comes from burning fossil fuels. But over time, as the proportion of renewables feeding into the grid increases, EVs will keep on lowering their carbon footprint. EVs will even speed up our transition to renewables. As we saw earlier, energy storage is critical in a grid that is powered by wind and solar. EVs can be viewed as big batteries on wheels. When connected to a two-way charging pile, their stored energy helps balance the grid. This is because the two-way pile can tap energy from car batteries when power generation doesn't meet demand. EV owners who let their car battery feed back into the grid will end up paying less for charging. Currently, EVs account for a minority of cars on the road. Turning them into the majority will require some work. One concern is that there aren't enough charging piles, but this is an issue that's being addressed. More and more governments are providing financial incentives to employers and building owners to install smart charging piles in their car parks. Separately, consumers are concerned about cases of overheating car batteries that catch fire. When this happens, it tends to attract a lot of attention. But it's becoming a non-issue in new electric vehicles. Sensors connected to the cloud constantly monitor battery conditions. Using data from hundreds of thousands of cars, artificial intelligence is able to predict faults before they happen warning drivers long before they're at risk of a thermal runaway. ICT companies like Huawei provide key components and technologies to make EVs more viable. Fast charging, for example. It will soon be possible to charge a car only five minutes and provide it with a 200-kilometer driving range. This involves performance improvements in the charging platform, the onboard charging system, the battery management system, and other components. Closely working with car makers, ICT companies are also investing a lot of effort in expanding the range of electric vehicles. In 2021, several manufacturers announced models able to go 1,000 kilometers without a charge. This range will expand even further with higher performing electric powertrains and improved power management systems. Switching to electric vehicles will not be the only reason that the transport sector improves its sustainability. A lot of research goes into making all types of cars more energy efficient, whether they're EVs, hybrids, or even fuel-powered. For example, most new cars now come equipped with sophisticated AI, often supplied by ICT companies, that help drivers accelerate and slow down more efficiently. Accelerating and braking are the most energy-intensive stages of driving. While EVs are more efficient at acceleration and deceleration, we can expect that all vehicles will keep on improving their energy performance. And that's it for this part. Next, we'll look at what the ICT industry does to minimize its carbon footprint.